Hello everyone, just to let you all know, we are now uploading on Wednesdays. We used to be Fridays, now you can listen and watch us on Wednesdays. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever else you get your podcasts and watch us on YouTube. The information used in this podcast is sourced from publicly available documents, media and accounts. There is no motive to harm or wish harm upon the subjects of this podcast. All opinions are the hosts and the host's own. Hello everyone. Hi. We hope you're having a great day so far. Welcome back to Clear History Podcast, episode 13. I think it's 13. Unlucky 13. Well, unlucky hopefully it's some. not unlucky today. <laughs> uh, it's great to have you back. We're really grateful to have you here. If uh, if any of you are new, welcome. Welcome. Take a seat. I'm George. This is Meg. Um, it's Meg. Get used to it. If, you, if you've missed any of the episodes, make sure you take some time to, to go back and, and catch up. There's loads of different ones now, as we said. Episode 13, it's basically a bloody catalogue now. <laughs> um, today, we're going to cover and discuss a topic a bit different from what we've spoken about so far and I think it's a pretty niche one that many of you probably haven't heard of before but that doesn't mean it's not an interesting one and I would urge all of you to to look it up after this not now. Can I just say one thing as well we went viral on TikTok. Oh yeah. 400 well viral viral these days is like 300 million. We went viral east midlands viral <laughs> no we we went viral across the country i would yeah. say um caused a bit of a divide in the comments if you want to know what that video was then listen, head on over to tiktok and listen to the schools episode yes where you'll get full context but otherwise head over to our tiktok at clear history pod and if you want to follow us on instagram as well we are also at clear history pod today we're going to be looking at the story of Timothy Treadwell, the grizzly man, an animal rights and environmental activist with a particular fond interest in grizzly bears. So Treadwell is mostly known for documenting years of his and his partner Amy's life living amongst the bears in Katmai National Park in Alaska, with the footage eventually being extracted and taking the focus of Werner Herzog's documentary, The Grizzly Man. So in this park, there is an estimated 3,000 of the total 35,000 Alaskan grizzly bears. And in the 85 years history of the park, no visitor had been killed by any of these bears. Before we get into Timothy Treadwell and what prompted the creation... I was about to ask so many questions already, but that's a summary, right? Yes. Because I was was overwhelmed already, but we're going to break it down. We're going to deep dive, yeah? Yeah, strap in. And I'll be ready with the questions because I know nothing about this absolutely nothing strap in get comfy um so meg (laughs) before we get into anything i want to know from you if you had to live amongst one of these animals for one year what would it be why and more importantly how would you do it so the options i've given you is of course a bear uh, a crocodile absolutely not sorry rule that one out a snake oh i wrote wolf twice a wolf wolf so well, i'll go tiger okay so bear, bear crocodile wolf snake, snake tiger. tiger i think it would have to be a wolf that's what i thought as well the reason why i mean we've got a wolf right here in the middle of us yeah a baby wolf by the name of barkley a gray wolf named barkley who is dependent on us in every aspect <laughs> of anything ever which makes me think I could tame a wolf. <laughs> I could train it. I could what? get it to sit, do paw. Because of him. You, that makes you it's think that. dogs, isn't it? Yeah. I know but... they're wild and I know they're quite feral. And sometimes when Barkley growls at me, despite his size, I do get a little bit scared. However. How do you... Yeah, but in this question, it's how. How do you do it? I think... You can't just teach it paw. And teach it to obey me. I honestly... <sighs> I just think that other options are too dangerous, like snake, venomous. I know a wolf could, like... Bite you. Yeah, and, like, still unalive you. But snake, they just act on instinct and attack. See, I didn't think about the venom of the snake. I thought about, like, being in bed and you're like, I'm really getting on with the snake at the minute. And then oh. you're like, oh, fucking hell, it's strangling me. Oh, you're into, the, like, the characteristics, like, the, the bond you create. I'm into the... um fight or flight the survival 
but then with the wolf because the wolf is the one that i chose as well in my own question um but i thought like <laughs> Mo- Mowgli vibes where like if you're around them enough and then i reckon if like you get used to it living out there so you'll get, get hunting i know you wouldn't you probably be like eating the berries off the trees and that but i'd be out there making like a spear catching like a bird and then i'd oh okay sorry maybe not with a spear maybe with like, bare hands like chasing it around oh god um bare hands or bear grills um, oh bear yeah bear and sorry. then um i would maybe throw the wolf some food well they slowly tame gain it some, yeah slowly gain its trust it's what i said from the beginning tame it yeah but you didn't say how i asked how well that i was doing a summary this is only an intro question george come on <laughs> so we're going with wolf and we're yeah. gonna we're gonna tame a wolf I by giving so. it food and then teaching it how to sit and do poor what do you guys think over. yeah let, let, me know. Know. let me know Maybe uh, we'll actually this. let me know pick the most difficult one in this i want a theory on how you could live with like a tiger or a snake yeah yeah i, I want to know how you do it and why you probably think your idea is better than ours just one final thing before we jump into the deep dive if you want to request a uh, topic, a case, uh, add a submission to our catalogue of ideas, then you can actually go to our website. Now, I'm going to leave it in the description or show notes. Um, it's very new. It's very fresh. But we do have a uh, topic submission form on there where you can leave absolutely anything and it will go straight to our email address so please be sure to do that thank you now let's get into the life of timothy treadwell and what led to the creation of the grizzly man documentary timothy william dexter was born on april 29th 1957 why didn't you react yeah say that date again Oh yeah, no, I I knew that at the time. Yeah, when I wrote it down, I was like, oh yeah, that's. But you didn't add a little asterisk. Asterisk. It's Meg's birthday. April twenty ninth. In Minneola, Long Island, New York, attending. Um, sorry if anyone's from this particular place, or maybe if your dad's watching. Uh, I believe it's Conoco High School. He was the third of five children, and from what we know, and from the, those closest to Treadwell during this time. Timothy's early life was what we would typically picture as normal or ordinary, with nothing out of the ordinary sticking out. In fact, Timothy was the Conoco High School's swimming team star diver. Timothy's parents describe him as an ordinary young man. It's worth saying as well, because I know I did say before Timothy Treadwell, so he changed his name to Treadwell in 1987. Um, So throughout this, I'm going to be referring to him as either Timothy or Treadwell or Timothy Treadwell. Why did he change his name? Do you know? It said, uh, from what I could see, it was something to do with a name that his mum used. But I think he just thought it sounded cooler, to be honest. What? Sorry, what was his previous surname? Uh, it was called Timothy William Dexter. Oh, okay. Treadwell. Treadwell. Maybe you just wanted his mum's maiden name. Maybe we're looking Maybe. into it. Maybe. Carry on. So, as we said, an ordinary childhood upbringing but question marks over the behavior of timothy only came about after he left to attend bradley university on a swimming and diving scholarship so here it's been claimed that treadwell uh, would converse with fellow students telling a narrative of being a british orphan or that he was from australia or both combined um, while telling a myriad of lies to develop uh, a backstory behind these lies and it's never really been confirmed why he would actually do this as we said before he had a normal upbringing so you know I mean like some people are just pathological liars like they thrive yeah. or not even that they intend to do it for a negative impact they just have to lie like they thrive off of lying psychologically yeah, yeah. as we progress maybe we can get a bit more of an idea of the mind of timothy treadwell um So he would also then take a particular interest in acting. And this was probably the most interesting thing that of the research and what I knew before doing the research. But he reportedly lost out on the role of Woody Boyd in the hit sitcom Cheers to the now very famous Woody Harrelson. Uh, As some of you may know already, Harrelson joined Cheers in 1985 and remained on the show for the remaining eight seasons until it concluded in 1993. And this was possibly what springboarded or probably what is what springboarded Harrelson into his roles in hit movies such as The Hunger Games, Zombieland, and Now You See Me, to name a few. That's like the um, 
butterfly effect, isn't it? If if Timothy had got the role, then we wouldn't know who Woody, Woody Harrison, Harrison is. Was, yeah. 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 Crazy. I wonder if Woody Harrelson ever thinks about that as well. Probably. Yeah. If he's aware of it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, but Timothy's father has said that this loss made Treadwell spiral down, leading to years of alcoholism and drug use. But throughout this entire period, the swimming and the acting auditions, there was only one true passion for Timothy Treadwell, though. Animals, nature and the environment were truly at the heart of Timothy, with him also keeping a pet squirrel named Willie as a child. This is so you. Not all the Fuck other stuff. Off. Not all the other stuff, but your love for animals. You'd love a pet squiz. You yeah, know I you would. would. Love a pet <laughs> you know you would. If you like, lived in the tree outside yeah. as well. Yeah. Not like inside. Actually. We do have... Like, really? We, we technically have a pet squirrel that jumps in the garden every now and then. He's pretty chunky. <laughs> yeah, he's fatty, isn't he? Uh, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe not that time. <laughs> he's a rotund little squirrel. <laughs> um, uh, so Timothy was called to the wild. After a close friend had persuaded him to, Timothy decided to travel to Alaska in order to closely observe bears in their natural habitat. And after his first encounter with a bear, he wrote that he had found his calling in life and that now his destiny was entwined with those of the bears. Timothy studied the bears across 13 years and 13 summer seasons in Alaska, whilst of course documenting his findings and working as a bartender in the off-season whilst managing to maintain his sobriety. Um, in his book, Among Grizzlies, Living with Wild Bears in Alaska, Timothy details surviving a near-fatal heroin overdose and attributes his ability to recover and abstain from drugs and alcohol entirely to his relationship with bears. Um, generally, Treadwell would base his camp on the Big Green, it's called, so an expansive area of the Hallow Bay on the Katmai Coast. In the Grizzly Man documentary, it's often seen that Tim uh, Treadwell will create, maybe let's say, imaginary locations um with this particular area mean? being known or what he called the grizzly sanctuary you know in america mm -hmm. um so in the uk you can only camp in certain places or or pitch up in certain yeah. places some people like i remember growing up by the beach people would camp on the beach all the time but it yeah. technically wasn't allowed I'm assuming that's the same in like national parks of America, yeah. like the Royal Parks in London. If you're caught sleeping in there yeah. or camping in there, it's you're moved on by the police. Like you're, you're, you get in trouble for it. So is that the same in America? Uh, you the, you are allowed to, but there are rules and regulations. We'll, we'll come on to okay. the, those, but I will just say so that some of the rules that there were is like, so you can't stay in the same spot. Um, for more than seven days so right. after seven days you have to move at least a mile away okay. with there being like 3,500 bears there you have to constantly move around and there's, there's a lot of different rules and regulations but we'll go on to whether Timothy adhered to these rules or didn't okay cool. um, so before we move even further on it has to be stated that Timothy was not actually alone on these grizzly expeditions accompanying him was his girlfriend Amy Again, sorry for pronunciation. Amy Hugengard? Hugenard? Hugenard, Hugenard I'm going to say. Hugen, is it H-U-G-H-E-N? Yeah. H-U-G-U-E-N-A-R-D. <laughs> okay. We'll call her Amy. Amy. <laughs> uh, born Octo October 23rd, 1965, and also from New York. Amy admired Timothy's book, and the pair's relationship developed after their mutual passion for conservation, and in particular, bears. Amy would occasionally tag along with Timothy for his trips to the Grizzly Sanctuary and similar locations. Um, from the little lo information that we know of Amy and her family, um, both her and her family are and have always been extremely private with little to no comment from her family since the Grizzly Man documentary. Uh, additionally, Amy would never be seen in the documentary recordings, only Timothy, who for the majority of the recordings would have been completely alone. So I think it was only three seasons that Amy spent there with him. Um, of course, one of them being the final one. Uh, so as we say, most of this was just him. Right. She was there sometimes. Okay. So during the recording uh, recordings of Treadwell's observations with the bears, it can be regularly seen for him to be extremely close to them so touching the bears swimming with the bears sometimes trying to play with their cubs and at times having to actually oh fend off a curious bear that's got a bit too close for comfort treadwell did however claim that he had always taken the utmost respect 
a mutual trust with the bears, even affectionately naming the bears that he would consistently meet from summer to summer. So some of the these bears were named Grinch, Grinch, Mi- Mickey Bear, Thumper, oh my Squiggle. God. Do you reckon he wanted to be like a Disney princess? You know, like where you just live in the wild, like Snow he, White is out the window going, Aah. He wanted to be something. And then the birds come. He wanted to be something. Yeah. Uh, also, just one more one more little interjection and then I'll let you speak freely. The bears that he was surrounded by, I'm assuming are in like these national parks in America. Do you think, you know, like when you go into uh, Bradgate Park in Leicestershire and there's deer everywhere? Yeah. Like they're obviously used to humans being around and people walking around all the time. Yes. Do you reckon there was a level of the bears kind of being a bit more tame or like a bit more accommodating towards seeing a human? Because stereotypically, you think of a bear, you think, oh my gosh. However, my family who live over in America, in Minnesota, it's very common for a bear to just like be in your front garden yeah so this is the thing from the research that i did um the bears actually tend to not be interested in humans um i was going to save this for the end but it's worth saying now that you've asked that there's a theory called the 25th bear theory where there could be 24 bears that you come across and they're all just not interested in you will be passive will leave you alone Mm -hmm. but there could be one bear that will attack other bears right. people whatever regardless and will have no bias right and they'll just go for you um but generally when people would be around here they weren't doing what timothy was doing where he would like base his camp right near them and like try and be as close yeah. to them as possible usually He's people entering their space usually people would just be walking like using it as like a hiking trail a bit like when you walk through a field of cows yeah in, yeah like in that england so UK? so the cows like Anywhere. them they would be like used to it but they wouldn't be used to people coming up to them and stuff so i'd imagine that these bears were probably a bit confused like well i know what that is but i don't know why he's doing this um oh yeah i was saying the rest of the names so two more names uh demon hatchet and mr chocolate <laughs> <laughs> so some mr. of these chocolate. bears some of these bears uh would have been what treadwell called members of a up-and-coming sub-adult gang that's actually what he said a what gang an up-and-coming sub-adult gang so young 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 bears right um so this and other reasons that we'll get into is what led skeptics and current opposers of treadwell to claim that he genuinely believed he was at one with the bears they yeah. will not attack he's a mortal or above life or that he truly believes that he is or wants to be a bear Mm. Um, in the later stages of the summer season, Treadwell and sometimes Amy's expedition would relocate to uh, Kaflia Bay, uh, a location also renamed by Treadwell to be the Grizzly Maze. Uh, even though they have names, I don't know why. He, he's, yeah. So he renames these yeah. places. So there's the Grizzly Sanctuary. He the wants Grizzly to be Maze. in Disney. He wants to be a Disney character. I'm sure of it. Maybe. So this location was at a much higher risk, though, and actually merged with a lot of the bear trails where they would go. Of course, increasing the risk of actually coming across one of these bears, but maybe that's what he wanted. So over the course of Treadwell's time in Alaska, he'd uh, recorded almost 100 hours of video footage. So across these 13 years um, and around 2001, Treadwell had actually got himself to a point of being relatively seen as a notable per- perspective on environmental activism. And he'd actually made regular TV appearances across America with the aim of educating children about the environment and bears. Uh, <laughs> Treadwell, <laughs> Treadwell had appeared on the Discovery Channel, The Late Show with David Letterman and Dateline NBC. And on one TV appearance, Treadwell was asked about the safety precautions of living amongst bears, such as bear spray or a firearm or some form of repellent to deter, deter attacks. Now, you're, you're not allowed to have a firearm in the National Park, but yeah. he responded that uh, I would never kill a bear in the defense of my own life. I would not go into a bear's home and kill a bear. With that, let's actually get into the core content of what Treadwell had filmed and what became the Grizzly Man. So as we've already mentioned during these trips, Timothy would be camping in peak bear territory whilst observing. Not some safe, secure space away, but actually right in the thick of bear country in in almost all of the footage. Um, So Timothy, like we said earlier, is way too close for comfort. Uh, with these bears not from a distance and this is a bit of a weird contradiction though as timothy himself states in one recording most times i'm a kind warrior out here 
Most times I'm gentle, I'm like a flower, I'm like a fly on the wall observing, non-committal, non-invasive in any way. Occasionally I am challenged, and in that case the kind warrior must, must, must become a samurai, must become so formidable, so fearless of death, so strong that you will win, you will win. Even the bears will believe that you are more powerful, and in a sense, you must be more powerful if you are to survive in this land with the bear. I bet he definitely as well was like really into he do you know if he was like vegetarian or vegan for because if he was a animal activist um no I'm, or do you reckon he was the other way where it was more like we need meat to survive I don't think he was either to be honest well yeah I just I just think in my head all the all those things about becoming a warrior becoming like Front not a warrior a kind warrior right okay i just it it feels like this like when people describe like an, oh it's our instinct it's our natural instinct it's like going back to like caveman times and stuff it just feels like he's very del- or was very delusional in the sense yeah. of delusion would be i the word. can survive by yeah. being this like humans are the strongest and the fittest and will always overcome any animal uh, do you know what i mean yeah well it doesn't really add up anyway because what we can see on the footage you know it's a bit of a oxymoron or juxtaposition in it where where he's saying that he's a fly on the wall he's an observer non-committal um but he's actually right there and the bears are like who the fuck is this guy yeah um so another thing to note here is going back to timothy's i guess what we would call like you said delusions uh call himself the kind warrior becoming a samurai and also of course believing that he's more powerful than the bears um he did however have some level of awareness or self-awareness to the potential risk stating if i retreat i may be hurt i may be killed i must hold my own if i'm going to stay within this land if they smell weakness they will exploit it they'll take me out they will decap- decapitate me and chop me up to bits and pieces me so, with the wolves <laughs> yeah so despite some of these efforts um he probably was actually a bit invasive to be honest or a disruption at least to these bears that didn't need or want him there at all this thing it's not needed or wanted yeah like it's unnecessary yeah the the closest encounter that we see or encounters that we see tread or have with the bears one being where he's filming this absolutely massive bear scratching its back on a tree um it then comes right up and around the area of the camera where he is uh, where we hear both excited and clearly nervous treadwell say <laughs> i'm gonna try and do it how he did it he's like it's okay i didn't mean to get in your way wow it's okay you're the boss nice job uh after the bear has safely <laughs> left the area we we then see the level <laughs> of bears like what? What's yeah they're literally like what the hell uh we can then see the level of excitement that he has for these animals so uh he's standing under the the same tree and it's clear to see the dramatic difference in the size between him mm. and the bear um because he, he like stands exactly where the the bear was and he's like tiny in comparison uh, and treadwell is just going oh he's a big bear he's a big bear a very big bear wow <laughs> um the the second close encounter <laughs> just to give you an idea of the it's excitement like in the room i know yeah <laughs> <laughs> the, the second close encounter actually involved one of the bears that treadwell knew and has sub- subsequently how named. how did he know him where did they meet he recognized <laughs> them didn't he he's met him before Right. Um, so here How? we can see they all look the same right no i reckon they might have like different fur or like sizes yeah. or you know how like they recognize sharks by like the scars on them and stuff yes yeah true i'm very ignorant to bears since i have never encountered ne- never one. met one <laughs> um here we can see timothy speaking into the camera by a river or stream area um which, by the way, would, of course, be one of the most popular areas for a bear to go in, like, fish. So he would always record in the areas which would be most active yeah. with bears. He needs um, to get that content. Yeah, he need, yeah, he's getting the best content. That's it. Um, but he is then interrupted by Grinch, slowly approaching from behind him as his back is turned. So he knows he's there. I think Grinch is a girl, actually. He knows Grinch is there. But as he's doing his monologue into the camera, Grinch is slowly like oh coming my gosh. towards. Oh and then my he like gosh. turns his head and sees it like almost last second. Um, so he turns to notice Grinch and says, 
Oh, hi, Grinch. <laughs> me at <laughs> Christmas. He turns back to the camera and goes, if I turn around too much, you'll bite me. Hi. She has kind of an aggressive attitude. Uh, hi. It's okay. How are you? Hi. How are you? Hi. Hi. So We're the, friends, you know, guys. <laughs> so the, the, the bear then starts edging closer and oh, closer God. to him and takes what looks like a bit of a nip <gasps> at him. And Treadwell swats his hand at Grinch, adding, don't you do that. Don't you do that. I feel like I might have seen this clip. Maybe, yeah. He goes, back off. Don't do it. And then he goes, it's okay. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm sorry. And then the bear, or Grinch, um, somehow does actually keep going, which I, I don't so think it, I don't think it's because he said he loved it and it felt bad. I think the bear was just like, what is it? I'm, I'm just going to go away. It's so weird that it knows the, he, know, he knew the bear so well to call it Grinch. And then Grinch listened. I'm kind of got a bit of faith in maybe, Mr. Bear Maybe man. Timothy Treadwell's onto something here. Um, but how he managed to survive, especially with, like, as long as he did, especially with regular encounters like this is quite a big question. And, you know, across 13 years, it's pretty mad. But regardless of all of this, that maybe could be considered quite controversial, you know, he shouldn't have been there. It's pretty clear to see that he did have a lot of love and infatuation for the bears. You know, he really did care about them. There was one, um, there was one bit he filmed where he was in his tent and he was almost pleading with the gods for there to be like better weather for the animals, like rain and stuff like that. He was pleading with God and right. Allah and everyone. Yeah. Um, and he definitely loved the bears because he describes one of them as the Michelle Pfeiffer of bears. Um, the same cannot be. She's said. also got. Her birthday's also April uh, April 29th, Michelle Pfeiffer. What a coincidence. Crazy coincidences, episode eight. Quink. I think. Now, the same cannot be said for his opinion of human beings, or more specifically, uh, the National Park Service. So for anyone who doesn't know who they are or what they do, essentially they manage all the national parks, monitoring nature, wildlife, and maintaining these spaces. So like you said, with like, Bradgate Park not like everyone's <laughs> going to know what Bradgate Park is hmm. but the ones who would like take care of the deer and make sure mm. they're alright and make sure that no one's mistreating them um, during his time in Alaska Treadwell had developed not the best relationship with the park service but what we can see in the footage is that he actually developed quite a bit more of a conspiracy or an us versus them mentality than was actually there um, so a lot of it was all in his head um, I don't think they really cared that much about him, but he was like furious about them and really did not like the, the National Park Service. So in one monologue, he states, and he's like intense when he does this as okay, well. He's like okay. locked in. Uh, I'm going to close my eyes and imagine I'm listening to him. Okay. Behind me is the grizzly sanctuary and down below is my camp. For I must now remain hidden from the authorities, from people who would harm me, from people who would seek me out as a story. My future helping the animals depends on it. I must be a spirit in the wilderness. However, that's not to say that there wasn't any actual existing tension between him and the National Park Service. Some of it was in his head, but from the very beginning of his time there, uh, the National Park Service expressed their worries about his behaviour. So these restrictions were what ignited Treadwell's aggressive opinion and disdain towards them. So according to the National Park Service, um, the Rangers reported at least six violations for Treadwell between 1994 and 2003. And these violations go from camping in the same location for over a seven day limit, like we said, right. improper food storage, refusing to install an electric fence around his camp or refusing to carry bear spray or any type of deterrent yeah. for a potential attack. Yeah. Um, the worst of these violations is guiding tourists around oh my without God. a license. I, do you know, I was... <laughs> Why does that... Guiding tourists... Come on, guys, let's go see the bears. I... What I was going to say um, was if they've obviously got to put these things in place and obviously have to like call him out or what's the word like sanction him for it, whatever, mm. because if he can do it, so can everybody else. So then suddenly yeah. you've got all these people who love bears ruining the it's like hunting in America, albeit I don't like believe in it or. I don't stand for it, but like they have like, don't they have conservation like regulations in hunting and it's like, yeah, and there's should... areas where you can and can't hunt and stuff. Yeah. Like they've got to, they've got to put these things in place or 
well, we know what human behavior can be like and yeah. what people do to intrude on something, a natural species like bears. Yes. So Treadwell's relationship with the National Park Service eventually boils over, where in one monologue, control seems to be completely lost. Uh, and he says, again, he's locked in. Okay, okay. Closing eyes. Expedition 2001 coming to an end for grizzly people. For me, Timothy Treadwell. I came here and protected the animals the best I could. In fact, I'm the only protection for these animals out here. And then the rant continues. They flew over a grand time of two times in two months. How dare they? How dare they challenge me? How dare they smear me with their campaigns? How dare they when they do not look after these animals and I come here in peace and in love, neutral and respect? I'll continue to do this. I'll fight them. I'll be an American dissonant if need be. There's a patriotic time going on right now. But as far as this fucking government is concerned, fuck you, motherfucking park oh. service. I'll beat your fucking asses. Oh. I protected the animals. I did it. Fuck you. Animals rule. Fuck you, park service. Oh my gosh. I beat you, motherfuckers. I beat you. I beat you. Fuck you. I beat you. I beat How? you. I'm the champion. I'm the fucking champion. I beat you, fucking losers. Wow. So yeah, he didn't like the park service. Yeah, it sounds like he wasn't too fond of them to be honest no no um in another scene not long after this rant we can see treadwell opening up on what it is like and what it takes to live uh with and exist around wild bears like grinch um mm-hmm. and he says i keep thinking about grinch i think about demon hatchet and mr chocolate <laughs> um <laughs> he says <laughs> But Who's the other one? Mickey Bear? Mickey Bear, <laughs> yeah. Like Mickey Bear. Squiggle, Thumper. Oh, Squiggle. I, I, before I carry on, there was one, <laughs> I didn't include this in it, but there was, there's one bit where there's two bears f- having a scrap, like full on fighting. <laughs> I think one of them, <laughs> one of them's think? Mickey Bear. <gasps> Mickey I, d- Bear? I don't know what the other one is. Oh, Mickey Bear. Um, but basically, Timothy's kind of like just watching and commentating over this fight and Mickey Bear gets the better of this other one. And then this other bear is like completely exhausted. Like, so you can just see it there, like spread out on the beach. And then <laughs> Timothy's like 30 yards away recording himself. And he's like talking to him about like giving him a post fight rundown. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, he's like, I think you underestimated Mickey Bear there. <laughs> and he's, he's like, he, he started to, to rope a dope you. And, he, and then I thought, you know, that's one tough bear. <laughs> this bear's on the ground like, fuck. Yeah, oh, and there's a bit as well. I'm cause exhausted. I'm in pain. The bear's Leave me like alone. the bear's like facing the opposite way, and then as he's talking, you kind of see him like go, <laughs> as if to be like, "What's this guy saying?" This guy in your ear, like, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, fucking hell, it's him again." <laughs> um, so, <laughs> oh, sorry, that's funny, Mickey Bear. In another scene, as we said, he goes on to say about what life is like, and he says. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there is no, no, no other place in the world that is more dangerous, more exciting than the grizzly maze. Come here and camp here. Come here and try oh to do God, what I do. You will die. Invite. You will die here. You'll freaking die here. <laughs> they will frickin'. get you. I found a way. I found a way to survive with them. Am I a great person? I don't know. Everyone has something in them that's wonderful. But mostly, I love these bears enough to survive and do it right. And I'm never giving it up. Never given it up. Wow. Where do you think this goes next? God, I honestly. So he hasn't been removed from the National Park Service, has he? Like they aren't able to go in and detain him and remove him yet, right? Don't, that hasn't happened yet. I don't know if they're like, uh, like. Illegal. Do they have that authority? Yeah, I don't know if they have that authority. I feel like they're just like rangers, aren't well, they? Well, this is the thing. It's like is maybe it they can a, pass it on to the police. Yeah, is it a? Is it breaking the law? Um, is it? Could you like put out a warrant for him for doing all of these breaches and everything? Or but the problem is, is that it's such a like it's such a big area, and what he do as well, he would um, put his tent underneath like really thick brush, so it made it really difficult for people to see him. Right. Like he didn't, I, want, I he, guess didn't, he didn't want I'm to be seen thinking, by the bears or people. I'm thinking of like, again, another park in Leicester, uh, Victoria Park. I'm thinking of that. But national parks are huge. Yeah. Huge. So 
I guess it is a lot harder the, to just sort him out and yeah, just the, remove him. The national him. park that he was staying in is probably bigger than Leicester. Yeah, 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 probably yeah. Probably way bigger. Yeah, um, okay. Um, I really don't know what, what will happen next. I mean, I have an idea based on what I know the the climax of this case is. However, I really don't know how we get there. So I'm clueless, but that's because he's a very... He, he's full of surprises, this is Timothy. He is, isn't he? Yeah. Well, at 2pm on Monday, October 6th, 2003... Timothy and Amy's air taxi pilot arrives. Oh, Amy. I forgot about Amy. Yeah. Amy was there. Uh, he arrives at Kaflia Lake as scheduled, ready to pick up the pair as usual. So he would, or other air taxi pilots, would have to go and get them at the end of their stay in the season and they would take them back. Uh, but they'd also do patrols as well around the area, make sure that everything's looking good. He quickly notices a large grizzly bear. He said it was rainy and foggy out that morning. So Willie continues towards the camp of Timothy and Amy, noticing slight movement, which he believed was Timothy shaking out a tarp. As he gets closer and closer to the camp, he senses that something just didn't feel right. Something seems strange, hollering with no answer, he says. So Willie then turned around and returned back down the path towards his plane, again noticing the same pretty nasty looking bear, which was just the meanest looking thing. Oh God. Once safely back in the plane, Willie flies over Treadwell's camp between 15 and 20 times with the intention of herding that bear away from the area. As he does... So he he can go in safely and get them. Yeah. Yeah. As he does, he notices the bear feeding from (gasps) what looked like a human ribcage, progressively eating faster each time he flew over. At 4.25pm, Katmai Park Ranger Joel Ellis and two other rangers arrive at the lake. Uh, along with Willie, of course. Mm, yeah, obviously he's called out. Yeah. Quickly conducting an interview with Willie. Willie says that he could not be 100% sure, but was confident that something was wrong. Oh, yeah. I'm not 100% sure, but this bear is eating somebody. And it's mean looking, he says. Yeah. Um, like Willie had done previously, he again proceeds up the path towards Timothy's camp alongside Ranger Ellis, Gilliland and Dal- Dalrymple. Um, when suddenly Gilliland shouts, Bear! Ellis then states that he saw an adult bear moving towards the group about 20 feet away. The group collectively yell towards the bear in an attempt to ward it away. So usually with, when they see a bear, you go like, Bear, bear! And I'm like, Rrr. Yeah, you, and it, and you kind of shout it away. at it, don't you? Yeah. Um, however, Ellis perceived that the bear was well aware of their presence and was actually stalking them. Then... All three rangers armed with 12-gauge shotguns begin to fire at the bear, with Ellis firing one time and Gilliland and Dalrymple each firing five times. The bear, of course, dies, yeah. and Willie Fulton shortly confirms that he believes this is the same bear he had seen earlier. Right. Now, at the site of Timothy and Amy's camp, human remains oh. were discovered, partially buried. Both tents were collapsed and torn apart, with a pile of grass, mud and sticks just ahead of the main tent, which Ranger Ellis states, seeing fingers and an arm protruding from the pile. Oh, gosh. Under this mound was Amy, who had actually intended on making this her last trip with Treadwell. Wait, she died? So this was her last trip with Treadwell, and she was... From what I've read, I don't know if this is true, she was intending on leaving him, and she secured a a different job that she was going to go and do yeah um and yeah oh she was 37 god, I didn't realize at she... the time oh god yeah it's then discovered what is left of timothy treadwell oh. with his right arm and hand laying nearby with his wristwatch still attached and his head connected to a small piece of spine mm. and a look of frozen grimace still oh frozen gosh. onto his face Shortly after, as the team begins to load their helicopter, another but much younger and smaller bear begins to approach the group, also ignoring both shouts and warning shots. The bear is also shot and killed after continuing to approach. So what actually happened in the final moments of Timothy and Amy? How did this all happen? Do we know? Well, (gasps) Timothy's camera equipment was also found 
at the site of the camp, with the footage later being analysed. The footage contained the audio of the final six minutes of their <gasps> life, capturing the events of the attack. Oh my gosh, because I was going to say, oh, if, like, did she die first? Or, like, did he kill her and then he was killed by a bear? Like, what is going on? Were they both killed by bears? I'm assuming so. But when it was, like, our partially buried human remains, I didn't know if that was, like, him yeah. homicide and then no, no, no. and then but we know i thought we, i thought it was going to be a lifelong mystery no um wow. so at first the audio is mainly all you can hear is like rain and wind on a tent so imagine you're in a tent and you can right. just hear like the rain yeah. and the wind mm. against the side of the tent followed by um the tent zip opening which has been presumed to be amy leaving the tent got yeah so amy can then be heard asking whether it's still out there it's not confirmed whether it was Amy's decision to start up the camera or whether Timothy had requested this, but it was probably that one. Mm -hmm. We can then hear Timothy's screams. Get out here. I'm getting killed out here. <gasps> With then the screams and shouts of Amy urging him to play dead. For a moment, this worked and the bear began to leave the camp. Oh my God. So Amy rushes over to Timothy before again being forced away by the return of the same bear. Timothy is again heard screaming with playing dead now, of course, not being an option. He pleads and begs Amy to hit the bear. Amy is then heard yelling at Timothy, fight back, fight back oh and stop, God. go away. As what sounds like a frying pan is hit on the, the head of the, the bear mm. amongst the screams of Timothy. It has been claimed at, uh, that at this stage the bear released the, uh, Timothy's head from within its <gasps> mouth, opting to then bite him around the upper leg area. Oh. He can be heard saying, Amy, get away, get away, go away. It was apparent that Timothy knew he was going to die, oh. but Amy did not leave. She didn't leave his side. It's thought that she was paralysed by the fear oh. and the trauma of what she had seen. And Amy, of course, then meets the same fate as yeah, her partner, Timothy. It's like fight Timothy. or flight. Like I was saying earlier, yeah. fight or flight or freeze. Yeah, and um, it's been said as well. I didn't include it, but it's it's been said that the bear was almost attracted to the screams that she did. Yeah, it's like a um, when a dog's barking and you shout at it to stop, the dog thinks you're barking at me. Oh, we're barking. <laughs> oh, we're barking. Okay, I'm going to carry on for the next half an hour. Yeah. So on Friday the 8th of October, an autopsy of the, the larger bear, you know, the one that they shot, yes. the mean looking bear, uh, an autopsy was taking oh. place, um, revealing human remains oh. and torn pieces of clothing. So it was estimated to be around 28 years old. Um, it wasn't confirmed whether the smaller, younger bear had actually taken any involvement in the attack as before any examination could be, be made, it was consumed by other bears or animals in the area. So online, um, the audio of this attack can apparently be accessed and heard. So I've heard this. <gasps> you heard it? Yeah. Oh, okay. However, this has been stated to either be fake or a recreation oh, okay. of it. Um, the original one, I assume they from, wouldn't... From hearing it, I would imagine it's a recreation. Yeah. It doesn't sound real. Um, I assume they wouldn't for respect yeah but for timothy and amy well uh the original audio only belongs to the victims families yeah uh, so in the grizzly man documentary i think it's uh timothy's ex has the audio and she had never listened to it and then the documentary maker werner herzog there's a scene of him listening to it and he's quite like a cool calm collected guy mm. and he, I, I think he's german but he takes it off and he's like you must never listen to this yeah because apparently oh. it's like brutal. You know, um, things where it's like there's been an accident or a car crash or something and you're driving past and you don't want to look, you don't. Yeah. But you see people like gawping at it. It's because it's that absolute like unfathomable situation and our brains somehow are like, I need to like know or I need to see that. I need to understand that. However, I just couldn't. Yeah, I even, could never listen to that. Even if it is fake, um, listen at your own discretion. Yeah. If you want to go and do that. Yeah. It's pretty grisly. Yeah. If you Intense. pardon the pun. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this audio and the previous near 100 hours of footage 
then of course became the focus of Werner Herzog's documentary, The Grizzly Man, releasing in 2005. So the aftermath and effect of, of Timothy Treadwell. Following the death of Timothy, five bears were poached a year later, while none had been poached previously or while he was camping in Katmai across those 13 ah. seasons. So five bears plus those two that died after the attack. Poached as in like hunted? Yep. So it became more known as an area to go and do that. Wow, do you reckon that's because of... Because he was like, oh, I'm protecting the bears. Well, um, earlier... Or we is heard, it exposure of, bears are here, come hunt them. We heard Treadwell state that he will protect these yeah. bears with his last breath, pledging to be non-invasive, non-committal, a kind warrior. Was he like a flower or a fly on the wall, like he had claimed? Did he achieve this goal? Did he save the animals or did he become part of the problem he thought that he would solve? Yeah, it's like, don't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. To some, Treadwell is known as a hero and that he championed the effort to maintain the habitat and continued survival of the grizzly bear, stating that he willingly sacrificed life and limb in an environment that leaves scientists and animal experts amazed and in awe. Um, yeah. Uh, I will mention as well, so a lot of what I got this from, and I, if anyone wants to do some research on this themselves after it, the the full report is available from the, the National Park Service after after this incident, and it's pretty lengthy, so you can go through and, and read it, and you can see what particular restrictions and regulations he uh, adhered to or, or didn't adhere to. Um, yeah. We'll link it in the show notes. Yeah, we'll... we'll and all the sources and stuff there but yeah <sighs> that intense, what's your, what's that your reflections <laughs> on that <laughs> that intense intense case and horrific story and then but yeah <laughs> that, that's how you end it yeah um it's insane i think it's a lot to digest and a lot to unpack obviously two people lost their lives and that's horrific and no one deserves to like lose their life that way and in such a tragic way and I can imagine it's hard because there's so much criticism or um scrutiny on his behaviors and his choices Mm. and what he chose to do and how he chose to impose in this natural habitat and environment and I was ready to go like this stupid idiot like why is he doing this why is he doing that oh god i mean we were laughing earlier and then it's like yeah and then they killed him and you don't want a victim blame you don't want to say well don't go and live with bears that's their instinct yeah. and i'm sure a lot of people do say that i'm sure a lot of people say well serves you right for going and live in bears but then when you when you described obviously that audio and if there's physical evidence of their last moments it really um it puts a stamp on that like trauma and that tragedy yeah so i find it really hard to think he's a stupid person or they're stupid people for doing all of these things however if there were more regulations or more ways to um move like if there was more of a because it's a threat to life him doing all of that but then I, I, I don't really know anything about this case or about the National Park Service over in America, but if there was like more to, you know, put restrictions and prevent this happening is what I'm trying to say, was that, would that have changed things? Who knows? But I, I don't think so. I think, yeah. I think, to be honest, he was probably asking for it. And I don't think if he if he was alive now or came back to life, he wouldn't begrudge what happened. To be fair, yeah, when you just said he was asking for it, I was like, oh, no, Georgia, don't say that. But his his dialogue throughout his content and his documentary or not like his I think think word of mouth, he was like, if he could pick a way to die, it would have been that. Yeah. But then it, it sounds like from that audio recording, his last moments were so desperate. And so like, that's where the delusion comes back in because it sounds like he was so shocked. You well, would probably be, after, fight or flight. But after all of those encounters as well, like, yeah. like he had with Grinch, where he was like swatting it away and going, I love you, it's okay. And yeah. it went away. He probably, yeah. he probably would be like, 
fucking hell, I am. Yeah, I've got yeah. something here. It's like it? when you train your dog and you think, yeah, I, I'm the master. They know that. And then they snap at you one day and bite you. It's like, you know, the theory, that, what was it? 25, 25th bear, yeah. 25th bear theory. You Animals are animals and they have instincts. animalistic yeah. instincts and we can never truly trust like what yeah well there's a uh, there's a guy who, who i think um he was either a ranger for the national park service or one of those air taxi pilots he, he in the doc he was discussing what he thought or like why it happened and he essentially thought that one day the bears were just looking at him and thought you know what fuck it yeah because like we said they they Maybe generally, they were just a bit extra hungry that day. Maybe, that sounds generally, so insensitive. They, but They <laughs> tend to leave them alone. So, yeah. you know, it could have been any time. I think he was so lucky to even have made it that long. Or if she's, if she, if Amy said on the recording as well, or it might have been Timothy saying, are they still out there? Yeah, Maybe an yeah. encounter happened earlier on in the day that was negative and... No, so what happened was is that the attack had already started the attack had already oh, started and then they were in and then the... and amy was in the tent with the camera so the camera starts oh and amy's going is he still out there yeah is it like, still out there to timothy so, outside to timothy outside who's right. being attacked by the bear and then the camera starts yeah and we don't know whether she decided to start it or he in those moments went to start the camera which i would believe to be honest yeah i would believe he'd do that actually based on the hour of information I have on him. I know that's quite generalised, but... Wow. Yeah. Um, that's an intense. Yeah, it's worth saying as well that, like we mentioned earlier, where the areas that he would stay were always going to be near bears, but this particular camping spot um, was actually like a very popular or common crossway or like path for, for bears. Yeah. So in some senses... Had he been? Had he camped there often in that particular spot? I believe so. I believe so. I think they were always around the same sort of areas. Yeah. The Grizzly Maze or the Grizzly Sanctuary. On that note, I think, we, I think <laughs> Barclay's, note, Barclay's fed up. He's done. He's like... Barclay's... I don't want to hear about bears anymore. Yeah, he's like, come on, guys. That's the end. Thank you so much for being here today um happy wednesday if you're listening on wednesday if you're listening on your usual friday and we're part of your routine we love that and we're so grateful for that any day you're listening we hope you enjoyed we hope it's sunny where you are the sun is setting here now sun Mm. lack of sun um but yes have a lovely week you can follow us at clear history pod on instagram tiktok You can visit our website, link will be in the show notes and description. You can follow us on Spotify, subscribe to us on YouTube, like, rate, review. We really, we we really, really, really are passionate about this and this is our, our little baby. So we really hope you enjoy and hope we can continue doing this. Am I a great person? I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> it's okay i love you i love you i love you we love you and we're grateful that you're here ciao bye